Stay tuned for Public Affairs with Jeff Berkowitz, this night's show featuring Bill Brady, 2014 Republican gubernatorial candidate. It's going to be a great show. Don't turn that dial. Yeah. You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game. And we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because we have State Senator Bill Brady, as promised on our show. Bill's, as everybody would remember, he was the Republican candidate for governor in 2010. Came within a, came within a I don't know, a cat's whisper of beating <laughs> Pat Quinn, okay, in that general election. And he's back, okay. Back in 2014, he's now a declared candidate. That primary is coming right up in March of 2014. We're taping this show on July 2nd, uh, 2013. So in just eight, this, things go quick here, you know? Before you know it, those eight months will go by and you folks will be deciding, do you want State Senator Bill Brady? Do you want Bruce Rauner? Do you want uh, State Treasurer Dan Rutherford? Or uh, do you want, perhaps, we don't know, he hasn't yet declared, State Senator Kirk Dillard to be your nominee for the in the Republican primary, okay? And then on the Democratic side, let's see, we've got those got a nice graphic up there, I think, of the Republican candidates. But on the Democratic side, we've got, of course, Pat Quinn running for re-election. Bill Daley, that's Commerce Secretary, former Commerce Secretary Bill Daley, as a is a declared candidate. And people think that Lisa Madigan, the Attorney General, may jump in the race, but she hasn't yet. So lots of exciting stuff coming up in the next nine months. And Bill, what's the main issue? You see, everybody's going to say, okay, how much money have you raised and all that BS yeah. in the horse race. We want to know what is the main issue you want to tell yeah. people about in like 30 seconds. Well, I think who, who can win and who can lead. Those okay. are the two main issues. Uh, I don't think there's any way doubts today that if the rematch against Pat Quinn, I could have that today, I'd win. Uh, we've, we've built a lot of things and, and the people have learned about Pat Quinn. And we could win. But who could lead also? We've got a pension catastrophe. We've got a, a job climate that's suffering badly. Uh, we've got huge deficits and debt. Uh, so the two main issues are who could win and who could lead. All right. Well, you know, some would say these, these problems are so intractable. Intractable. It's intractable. I can't say that word right. <laughs> They're difficult, okay? These problems are so difficult that, to be fair, You've got a hundred billion dollar um, underfunding, at least some would say two hundred billion dollar underfunding, you know, on the pension side, and you've got forces, political forces, on both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, union forces, who don't want to see these pensions cut at all. Okay, and so you've you know, in, you've come out fairly strongly for state employee pension reform, but the, and you're for the Madigan bill, right? I would support that. If you had to choose between the Madigan bill and the Cullerton bill, two Democratic sponsored bills essentially, you have supported the Madigan bill over the Cullerton bill, right? Even though you're a state, you are in the state Senate, right? I am. Okay. So you have done that, but you know there are Republicans who voted against that, right? Against the Madigan bill, right? They don't want it. They apparently don't want any reform. They've got, they've got government employees in their district. They're taking, uh, they're taking <clears throat> the state uh, public sector union money. What are you going to do? Are you going to go rap on those Republicans and say, okay, support me because I said I can lead? Well, let's start with what, what created the problem. Okay. Uh, it wasn't the employees. They paid into the system. Uh, every teacher, every IDOT worker, every state employee, state university, they paid into the system. They lived up to their end. But it was this governor and other governors and, and legislators, both Republican and Democrat, who would vote for borrowing as opposed to funding, who, who left us with this problem. I serve on the conference committee. Just last week we had a hearing and it proved uh, that most of the problems have come from the fact that they have not been funded. Uh, but we are where we are today. And if we're gonna live up to the obligations that people have earned to date, we have to have reforms. And that's what I'm all about. I want to live up to the obligations that the people who've paid into the system have earned. Uh, but to do that, we've gotta prospectively reform how we move forward. Mm -hmm. And, and that will also protect the taxpayer interest to make sure we've got safe roads and, and school funding and all the other things that are important. Uh, and, and that's leading, uh, using the facts to convince the legislature and the public uh, that this is a win-win. Uh, it takes leadership. 
Well, what you're talking to the people out there, 13 million people. You know, we got a big viewership here. You may be talking to a lot of those folks. Certainly, well, in the Republican primary, it's interesting, only about 700,000 people vote. Is that what it is, really? Approximately. Okay. So 13 million people in the state of Illinois, but initially you have to talk to the 700,000 or so Republicans who vote, right? Because if you don't win the primary, that, you know, you don't get to go on to the, We've learned to the big race, right? That's okay, right. you know that. So what do you tell the Republicans? Let's do it that way, okay? What do you tell the Republicans in terms of the state employee pensions that they should know? I mean, you, you know, use these words, okay, these people earned it, they put in their money. Are you telling them um, your focus is on the COLA, the cost of well, living well, adjustment? Well, first of all, you tell them the truth. Uh, one well, you're thing, never going to get elected doing that. Well, you know, it's, it's what Edward I'm going to do. Did Dan Edward tell you that? Yeah, I mean, Dan, uh, come on now. Don't mislead this guy. You know, you, you one can't thing that's not going to be different about this election is the truth. I told people the truth the last time. Governor okay. Quinn did not. Uh, I told them we needed pension reform to protect their interest and to protect the taxpayer interest. Uh, the truth is that the cost of living increase, 3% compounded, uh, is unsustainable and unreal in terms of, of how we solve this. So, yes. Uh, prospectively, not taking away a cost of living increase anyone's earned to date, but prospectively altering the cost of living increase to bring it more in terms of reality and something we can afford is an absolute part what of the solution. Look, look those state employees, look those public sector yeah. unions, even though you're focusing on the Republican yeah. primary, because you're going to need some of those folks in the general election. Look them in the eye and tell them exactly what you well, mean about the COLA and adjusting well, them. Well, what they know is is that the fund will run dry if we don't reform. And then they'll be subject to an annual appropriation on the legislatures when there's no money in the funds. So when reality sets in and we talk to the state employees and we say, if it be a teacher or a, or a transportation worker or a state trooper, and say, listen, to protect what you've earned to date, uh, we're gonna have to prospectively change the COLA. There's several ways to do it. Uh, one is you could say we're going to suspend it in this year and this year and then we're going to reinstitute it at a level we can afford. Or you could say uh, we're going to pay it on the first $50,000 uh, at an at adjusted the first $50, rate dollars of in pension, pension income. Pension income. Yeah. Or okay. you might pick a lower level. Like $25,000. But, but, but there are various that, yes. But there are various ways. But the what do you recommend? Let's lead. What do you recommend? Don't tell me there are five options. What do you think is the best option, State Senator Bill well, Brady? Well, my bill honored what everyone had earned, uh, suspended the COLA until we got our footing back, and then let the legislature reinstitute a COLA based on an annual affordability. Uh, that was my bill. It protected everything that people had earned. When you say until we got our footing back, how long was that well, COLA suspended? We have to be able to pay our bills on time, but they, it can't, be a, it can't, how, be, a, it can't be a guaranteed uh, liability to the pension system. Okay. That's, that's the critical... A juncture that we have to be truthful uh, with the people of yeah. Illinois about. Well, did your bill say specifically as to how long you were suspending? No. It said, let's get a footing back yeah. on track. Okay. Let's remove it as a liability of the system, realizing that the legislature uh, will, at that point in time, uh, incrementally give cost of living increases as the people of Illinois can afford to do so. Okay. It'll be a very important voting block, which is one of the reasons we haven't passed this reform. But it's time to be truthful with the people. But you're, you, you've been on several pension committees. You're currently on an important pension committee. So you study this issue. You don't have to say, you can bring in the experts. In a sense, you are an expert now. Right. So when I ask you, okay, if you're governor, if your bill were to pass and you were to get elected in 2014, approximately, how many years do you think it would take for Illinois to get its footing so you could say, okay, we can go back to a... Yeah. When you say spend it, Coca-Cola, I think you mean freeze it. No cost of living adjustment for those state employees and their pensions until you get their footing. No COLA, zero. How long, Bill? Two years, well, again, four let's years? Also Just understand. give me an estimate. Let's, also, we, we, give me an let's estimate. also make clear, any COLAs that have been earned to date would continue to be received. So we're not taking anything when away. Earned to date. I mean, well, if they were earned a cola for last year and the year before, oh, sure. and the year They've before, they've got that money. We're not going right. to dip into it. But some are but trying to forward. some are trying to scare them into thinking we're going to take something away that well, you're we're already we're getting. Ask them to pay something. But, but I would okay. think that in okay. in two to three years, if we do the right things in the yeah, economy, there would be cost of living increases uh, put in place and passed by the legislature. And those cost of living in increases in the past, they called it a cola, but it was an automatic three percent compounded 
even though which meant know, it was on itself. And so it's compounded, make as folks opposed it just to makes simple. It tough to deal with as opposed to simple. It means you're paying interest on interest that they got essentially. If you get compounded interest, you earn interest in the bank. And the bank's paying interest not on your principal, yeah. just on your principal, but on interest. So the cola would apply not just to what their salary was before, but then also the salary increase that occurred. Sort of, I've sort of done okay. I think you've done okay. Okay, but okay. So that then when you go back to actually having a cola. You're not going to go back to something like three percent. You're saying you'll go back to something that reflects the cost of living, like the super consumer price index, right. some actual index. So if the cost of living is going up one and a half percent, people don't get a three percent cola; they get a one and a half percent. And one is of, that your intent? And, and Let me the, just ask you: Is that your intent? That's the intent. Okay. But one of the other other portions of this constitutionality, and there there are opinions out there that say that under the under the concept of offer and consideration. Uh, that uh, if we were to go through a period of hyperinflation, they may de might even in that particular year or two get more than three percent, and and that makes it right. even more constitutional okay. right. and fair because it reflects the actual cost of living going right. up or down, not just and the basket of goods okay. for a cost of living is different for retirees uh, than what it would be okay. for families. Now, some people have suggested raising the retirement age. You don't want to do that, do you? Well, I, I'm not sure that's constitutional because you. Under the current law, you are uh, you are have earned a benefit at a certain age, and I'm not sure that it, the savings that is significant enough to fight that battle for. Well, but it says that people in the future, prospectively, they couldn't they couldn't start getting a pension if the retirement age was set by law. I'd say if they could retire at 55, they might have or 60 whatever it is now, it might be 55, they might have to retire at 58 yeah. or 60. So it still is future. I'm not sure why you think that's taking something away you've earned because it just means you but have if to you're work a few if, more if, years If you're longer. vested into the system, yeah. you've earned the right to collect a pension at a certain age, whether you work another day or not. And so if you're vested, and to increase that age, uh, I think does call into the constitutional question, and I but don't you know. know that, people and I don't know. On that. Oh, so sure, there are. It's reasonable people can disagree on that. Absolutely, this. That's all I'm okay. but I'm not sure that question is worth the savings that it brings. Okay, that's your other point. I believe we can bring enough savings in other ways. But you would you would also though favor increasing the employee contribution. You don't think that's taking something away, do you? I, I don't think that's taking something away. But again, I'm not sure that it's worth what we're getting for it at this point so in time. So your focus, you think you can solve this problem by focusing on adjusting the cost of living yes. adjustment, the COLA. Absolutely. And you know, folks, you and, see, I, and the actuaries tell us the same. And see, this is what we do here on public affairs and why we try to get, like, Bill, have you done this show 10 times, maybe 15 over the years? I've enjoyed the show. Okay. A number and, of times. But, but because Bill's not hiding, he's willing to tell, it's not me, you're okay. telling our viewers. You're telling people yeah. across the state of Illinois. So I enjoy it because I get the chance to talk with Bill. And he's a nice guy yeah. and he's interesting and I get to learn your position and I can ask these questions. But really I'm here to do this for the folks because people, if you're in the Republican Party, you're probably wondering, well, exactly, what would Bruce Rauner's position be? <laughs> now you've seen his ads and you've seen, you probably talked a little bit to Bruce, right? I have. He's a nice enough guy. Nice right? enough guy. He's a Republican, right? You would agree? Is he a Republican? Uh, come, says he is. Sometimes, yeah. Okay. So Bruce should be here, don't you think, talking, because just because we'd like to say to Bruce the same questions. Does Bruce favor focusing on the COLA? Does Bruce favor yeah. increasing the employee contributions? Does Bruce favor, you know, oh, oh, the, increasing the retirement age? Does Bruce do what the only policy institute says? You really have to get away from a defined benefit system. You can't just do the reform you're saying. They would differ with you. They say you have to go toward a defined contribution well, system. Let me just get the question out. So the question for Bruce, are you closer to the Illinois Policy Institute? Are you closer uh, to, what, um, to what State Senator Bill Brady has said? Or maybe you're closer to Dan Rutherford, who nobody really knows what, you know, okay, we'll get to Dan in a second. But this is but, what- But to be clear, to be, the prospectively be, my, my yeah, plan okay. also calls for a modified defined benefit with a defined contribution. Okay, yes. But, but you see, you know, the only policy institute says you got to just get away from this. You, they say these yeah. are band-aids, what you're saying. To be fair, I, you know John Tillman. I'm sure you and he respect each other. Reasonable people can disagree. But he says you have to go right now toward a defined contribution, not toward, to a defined contribution system. Pay the people who have 
they're what they've got onto the old thing. Yeah. But then get away from this well, there's, there's two issues right now that, going and, forward. And I don't right? disagree that uh, in concept, that's the way the private sector, there's two issues that are different. 85% of the, the private, sector. private sector has gone there. But, but, and but, but, the public sector but, hasn't. But the, but the one area of contention here is, is that the largest area, over 50%, are the, the teachers. And they, under current law, don't receive a employer contribution to Social Security or an employee contribution. Uh, so that is a difference uh, between the private sector where there are Social Security. Can you say that about the teachers again? They don't what? They do, teachers and others, minimal others, but all teachers, uh, do not make uh, an employee or an employer contribution to Social Security. So they don't qualify oh, for Social right, Security. They don't, they, they, they so, don't make payments so, into Social so Security. So that's different well, th than the yeah. private sector. Well, but we can switch them over now. Okay? Well, I don't know if you could or not. I mean, you've read the plan of John Tillman, right? Have you gotten familiar with it? I've, I've, I mean, is that your criticism of it that is different? I, and I'm not of being critic critical of the thought yeah. process and the ability to lay a solution. I'm just simply saying the other reality is. Uh, I, I was the first one to introduce a 401k bill uh, a decade ago. Okay. A decade ago. You were like a pioneer. And uh, the reality is, okay. you're not going to pass that. So, this is to some extent like uh, I'm in the real estate business. Well, you're not so, when, pass we, it this when, year, when we negotiate a house sale, I often say to people, they may not get what they want, uh, but if you're going to get uh, if you're going to get a hundred dollar a hundred thousand dollars for your house, you have to ask yourself a question. If I'm not willing to take that hundred thousand, would I really want to buy the house for a hundred thousand? Uh -huh. And so, part of the negotiation about solving the pension crisis is the analogy in there: how much savings can we get that will help us uh, to protect what people have earned and and uh, to provide the necessary okay. functions of state government? Well, we got, we got to go on, and but I think I think people have gotten a sense of where you are in the state employee pensions, right? And we want to give them that. And we don't quite know where Bruce Rauner is on a number of issues. And I, so, Bruce, you should come on the show. That's, I'm just going to say that, okay? Because, you know, there are shows where you've gone on and they do 15 minutes and you smile and they smile. And, okay, I'm not going to say who they are, but we all know, okay? You don't have to answer questions. You don't have to spell it out. And Dan Rutherford, you're a state treasurer, you know? And you've been a state senator. He was a colleague of yours, right? Mm -hmm. Dan, you should come on the show. You should stop screwing around and saying, okay, we'll get back to you, blah, blah, blah. Not, it's not a dis not to me. No, I don't care about me. Why? So the, those seven hundred thousand Republican voters kind of get a sense who Brady is, and hopefully more, and more voters, maybe eight hundred thousand, nine hundred thousand, and the Democratic voters and the independents that you're going to need eventually yeah. in general election could start getting a sense of who you are, of who Bruce Rauner is. Hey, Bruce, you can do some things with ads, but. He, uh, you, you got to get to the guy. What is your position? And you can't just give out press releases. You got to do it back and forth. Okay. Same thing for you, Dan. And you know, your state treasurer. We love you, Dan. But you got to come on and answer these questions. Well, it sounds like this Diller, is an endorsement for me because I. No, because you. It's it, we. We don't. We don't. As you know, Bill, we don't endorse candidates. We endorse that everybody should do what you've been doing for I don't know the last umpteen years, fifteen years. We've been doing the show. When you're when you're running, you come out and give your positions. When you're not running, yeah. you come out and give. And that we endorse, Bill. We're not going to endorse anybody for governor, okay? But you come here. I was early just reading on. between the lines. Well, if you want to do that, okay. The same thing on the Democratic side. Okay? What other the Democratic is? voters, we got, we got, um, we yeah. got maybe two million of those. And they, Pat Quinn, you've been governor for a long time, but you know, you did, you never had specific legislation. If you think that's the way to go, come over here and, and defend well, it. Well, Pat Quinn and I both me? nearly got a million eight votes. A okay. million eight hundred thousand that last election. So, so people got some sense of who you are, but still they can learn. And you know, uh, Bill Daly, we've been talking to you and talking to your team, and we're sure you'll come out soon. Yeah. The point is we're not, we're not Republican on this show. We're not Democrat. We just want good public policy, and we want democracy, and none of this can work unless folks come on the show. So uh, that's the end of that pitch, and we're going to just go on to some other issues, okay? Good. Is on the economic side, we'll get to some of those social issues, yeah. but jobs, 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 okay? What's the unemployment rate in Illinois? I've been, Bill Daly said it's like one of the highest in the country. It is one of the highest in the right? country. Okay. It's, uh, well, I think 8% or somewhere near there. The oh, point well, I is think it's more than 8%. The point, the point being is what the, national fa rate's the, just the, about the factor that I focus on is over the last five years, we've lost over 290,000 jobs. Uh, 
these are national. They're, they're going to other states. They're going to other states. They're not, they're not evaporating, and, and, they're just going somewhere else. And it, it's, it's bottom line effect to the livelihood of a family who's trying to okay. support themselves. Bottom line effect to the state budget. I estimate it's over four and a half billion dollars in negative effect to our state's budget. Money that could be used in so many better ways. And, and an opportunity we could give so many families. So you're right, jobs, jobs, jobs. It's about someone who's got a platform to create private sector jobs. Uh, that, means, that means sending a message. It means pension reform. It means paying our bills on time. It means balancing our budget. It means preserving uh, road fund dollars so our toll roads and our other roads and infrastructure are maintained and balanced so that businesses know that Illinois is serious about providing an environment uh, that's conducive to business growth. It means workers' compensation reform uh, so that they can afford to operate in Illinois. All the important things that are so important. It's a win-win for us. And uh, this governor's failed to lead on it. Uh, we're going to lead on it. It also means reducing the tax burden. You know, Pat Quinn uh, promised folks in the last election that he wouldn't raise their taxes 67%. Uh, but he did. And that has taken money out of the pockets of families. Over one week's pay out of the pocket of every family uh, in a year has been taken away from them by Governor Quinn since he's been You're governor. You're saying when they raised the income tax, Quinn was saying he told people they wouldn't do it during the election, and then he did? Is that what you're saying? He, he promised people that he wouldn't okay. do that. Okay. Now it's raised, but as you know, it's set to sunset, right, in the year 2015, right? It is. Now, Bill, you opposed the increase, right? I did. And now would you say you would favor the sunset? You wouldn't favor extending it? Absolutely not. But now, what, let me play devil's advocate here, okay? Right. Uh, well, most journalists would ask you and say, What's the revenue now that the state's getting? Is it something like $35, $36 billion for the general revenue fund? To use a figure that's yeah. close, yeah. All right. Now, if you, if, you, if you let that income tax sunset, won't that revenue go to back down to what the revenue was before, which is about $30 billion for the general well, revenue fund? Well, there is fund? a mechanism in here that uh, alleviates the ability. This is why pension reform is important, too. If we reform pensions, that will free up resources that we can use uh, to allow that to sunset. But you're, you're but, still going to have $5 billion payments even on the But the first year it's about 2.4 and the second year it's another 2.4. Okay. So you have to build so you it have in. a little bit. You okay. have to build it in and you have to manage the state resources. But, but where do you get the other? So that, that takes care of $2.5 billion of that yeah. $5 billion gap. Where well, do you get remember, the other 2 .5 Remember billion? what I told you, the whole 290,000 jobs is a $4.5 billion okay. savings uh, to the bottom line of the state. You've got to incorporate. I mean, if you bring those jobs you, back, you're going to generate more revenue, corporate tax. That's right. There's two in, in, what people in, forget, in, in income tax particularly uh, some of my Republican colleagues who are running for governor who say they want to extend the income tax. Mm -hmm. And who says that? Uh, Anybody? You know? I'm, I'll let, I'll let them get in here. Does, does Dan Rutherford say that? Dan, do you want to say that? What they, for, Dan, what, what that? What they, what they forget Kirk is Dillard? there's no, two ways know. to raise revenues. Okay. You can raise revenues to a point by taxing people. But as Art Laffer told us, tax rates that get too high reduce revenues. Right. But you can always raise revenues uh, by increasing the base. The base on which the tax is applied, applied by having more people working. So you're taxing more the base. You're not raising the rate. Yeah. And you have more corporations that are generating revenue. So that's your, that's your approach. Absolutely. Okay. And you think Rauner would agree with you? Dillard would agree with you? Ruth I'll let, I'll, as you said, we'll let them come on your show and determine. We'll find out. Okay. Uh, and like Medicaid, has that been fixed? Because that no. was a big, it's that another, was a big another, drain. It's still, it's still another area we can save billions of dollars. Okay. We still have thousands of people in Illinois who are receiving Medicaid benefits who are not eligible. And the point being is to, to make sure we provide the maximum benefits we can to those that are eligible, we must purify the system and only give benefits to people who we are truly eligible. Need, truly needy. Is, what, is that how you put it? Truly needy. Okay. Absolutely. Eligible. You're saying people, they've expanded eligibility, so they may No, it's be. not that. There's yeah. also people who are receiving benefits who had, have not proven oh, that see. they're eligible mm -hmm. for okay. those benefits. They just somehow come on the scene and they say... Thousands of people. Proof. Okay. Education. Education is a major cost, and uh, Robin Staines has essentially said when she was on this show, she, she's no wild right-winger. She's pretty conventional in her approach from Advanced Illinois. She said in CPS about one out of every five black kids in fourth grade, and that's going to be a pretty similar number for brown kids, are reading at grade level, meaning four out of every five are not reading at grade level. Think about it, four out of every five. 
80% of the kids in CPS fourth grade are not reading at grade level, you go to the higher grades, you're going to find something quite similar. That can't be something we call working. We've got problems in other inner city or areas, similar inner city across the state of Illinois. Dake Decatur probably has some problems like that. East St. Louis has some problems, right? Simple aside, I think Senator Dick Durbin had it right. Sunday. He says no city that's ever had the word east in front of it is doing well, right? Seriously, I don't want to slam East St. Louis, but anyway, okay, so education is still an issue. You favor school choice? I do. You favor charter schools, more charter schools? I do. Favor trying to give individuals, especially in the inner city where schools aren't performing. We spend 15,000 per kid per year. Give them the 15,000 and say, if you're happy in the public school, stay there. If not, take the 15,000 to the private school of your yeah. choice. You'd sign on to that? I would. And let me tell you why. I wonder, Rauner probably would sign on to it. Sounds like it. Rutherford, I don't know. Dillard, I don't. Guys, come on, see? Let me tell you you're why, letting, though. You're letting Bill Brady just, what's, what's he, he's going to run away with this race. What's goal. important We want to have a race because why. we need a race here. In the business world, we know that competition uh, makes things more efficient mm -hmm. and better. Mm -hmm. And when you have competition, you have better results. This is all about driving results for the children that you mentioned that aren't, aren't getting the results that we want them to have. Poor reading levels, poor math levels, poor science levels. Uh, competition. Uh, it creates an environment where people will drive better results. In the end, it drives better results at the public school system, the charter school system, and at the private. Schools, because in public schools, because public schools, public schools is compete, where I started. Where they have to that's where now. I started. Yeah. Public schools, it drives better results at the public right. school. So that's what we want to do. This is about building a stronger public school system right. uh, through competition. Okay. Uh, it's not about doing away with public school okay. systems. You know, we got to go a little bit to the social issues because some people say that's important. It's important in the Republican primary and the general election. Abortion is always on people's minds. You're pro-life, right? I am. Does that mean you would only allow uh, a woman to have an abortion if her life were at issue? Is that what that means? You know, a lot of people like to get into these, these weeds. Abortion is an important issue. Okay. And uh, I personally am pro-life, as you well know. But the fact of the matter is the United States Supreme Court has limited uh, what a government can do in terms of intruding in a woman's privacy. Uh, so focus on the issues where you can actually make a difference. I want to I want to provide funding so women who want to carry uh, their babies, their pregnancies to term, have the financial wherewithal to do so. And the prenatal care. Absolutely. And the access to prenatal care. Absolutely. You're not somebody who says, okay, we don't want to have abortion, but then these women who are low income have to fend for themselves yeah. to take care of themselves to prepare to have a child. Absolutely. You're not that guy. And what people know is that under the ruling of the United States Supreme Court, a governor can't really alter or restrict someone's right to choose. Uh, they can, though, do things like give parents a say in the health care interest of their children. Okay. Th those are the types of priorities well, we need to can. focus on. Uh, yeah, one day, it doesn't seem likely soon, but one day you could have enough Republicans, if not a majority in the State House and the Senate, were enough to team with other Democrats who are downstate and who might also be pro-life. They can't overturn Roe v. Wade, those individuals, but they can say that Roe v. Wade might permit a ban on late-term abortion, right? Well, and then the governor would, yeah. then people would be interested to say, Bill, would you sign that bill if there was a restriction? And didn't we have that passed in Illinois? And I don't know, did the governor sign that? Would you sign yeah. the bill that says they're going to restrict the right on a woman's right to choose? for a late-term abortion, well, if it can be for let's, let's take an, an example that was not hypothetical. The President of the United States was the only member of the Senate who voted against the partial birth abortion bill. So there's things you can okay. do. Okay. But, but let's be, so there is some, let's there's be some realistic and focus on where we can make positive inroads under the Supreme Court ruling. That's providing funding for women to carry their pregnancy to term. Uh, that's about giving parents a right uh, in the health care interest of their child in all areas. On concealed carry, we only have about a minute left. We just want to take a minute to thank, thank you so much, State Senator Bill Brady, for coming on the show. Good to be on this. We hope you'll come back, finish out some of these yes. issues we're not covering. Concealed carry is very complicated as to where it stands.